Hey Ninja Nation, this is Zach, the Sales Ninja Harlow, coming at you with our next training series on what today's topic is, overcoming objections. You've probably heard it said, if you've been in sales for like more than five minutes, you've had somebody tell you that objections is just part of sales and he or she who can overcome the objections the best will win the most. I think the danger in that advice, the danger in that training, the danger in that philosophy is it sounds right. It sounds like it's got some truth to it. The challenge is this. I fundamentally disagree with all of that. And here in just a moment, we're gonna go back to a throwback video that I did a couple of years ago when I was training my team, my local uh, bricks and sticks, uh, single office location team, uh, on overcoming objections and what's wrong with that belief, what's wrong with that philosophy, and what would be a lot smarter instead. So check out this video. For the last few years, we took this little soccer ball here and we wrote down all the super duper common objections that we get out in the field and we were training our team how to respond to these objections. Now, I don't train how to overcome objections. I think that's the wrong uh, picture entirely, but we were training how to, how to respond to, do you have some information you can leave? and we're just too small, and we've looked at Aflac before, and we're just too busy, check back, and you're the fourth agent that's been in here, et cetera, et cetera. Like I could go through the entire soccer ball, and what you're going to realize is that I bet in any market you're in, no matter where you're at, whether you're in Oklahoma, New York City, Connecticut, or Colorado, all of us face the same stinking identical objections. In fact, What's been told to me most of my career is that's the same objections we had when I started. And that was people who had already been in the business 15 years at that point. So we're talking about this soccer ball now being 30 something years old. Like these objections being 30, are you kidding me? In 30 years, we haven't figured out as an organization how in the world to evolve our conversation so that we stop facing the same BS that they've been facing in the field for 30 years. Does that, is it driving anybody else crazy that 30 years later, we are still trying to teach people how to overcome objections that we've been facing for 30 years? May I submit to you, there is a much, much better way. Here's the real importance that I want you to understand about objections. When you really study objections, when you really begin to understand what they are and why you get them, you will realize that that soccer ball is no longer relevant because we have identified that there are only two types of objections. Now, I talked about that in the video, but I want to draw it out make sure that you really get this. There are only two types of objections. There's not three or four or 10, there are two. And when you realize there are only two types of objections, it should help you fundamentally shift your thinking in, I'm gonna learn how to overcome objections and instead, I'm gonna learn how to listen to the objection. And then I need to clarify, is this objection real or is this objection reflexive. All right, check this out. If you caught what I just said right there, that was incredibly important. When you get an objection, your job is to stop overcoming it and start listening instead so that you can clarify, is this objection real or is this objection reflexive? Okay, how do I know if it's real? How do I know if it's reflexive? It's not your opinion. It's not what you think you heard. It is what they said, and it's you learning how to listen even more intently. I'm gonna give you a couple little tricks to understand how to identify if their objection is real or reflexive, and then more importantly, what to do with it if it's a real objection, what to do with it if it's a, ref a reflexive objection. We treat objections as though there's something to overcome, and so we don't nearly hear what they're objecting to. We just immediately go into, well, I understand how you feel. This is my favorite. Like most of you, whether you realize it or not, you have been taught this old school overcoming objection technique called feel, felt, found. And so the, the objector says something along the lines of, hey, look, we've had you guys in here before. Y'all are in here all the time. Uh, we've, we've looked at Aflac before. We're just not interested. We're just too small. We already have benefits. We don't want, whatever the objection is. And then we typically say something like, in fact, I remember, I remember being trained 
to listen to whatever the object, objection was, and then it doesn't matter because you're just going to come back with, I understand exactly how you feel because other, some of my best clients felt the exact same way about X, but what they found after meeting with me was Y. I understand how you feel. Others felt the same way, but when we met, they found out that blah, 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 blah. So you should meet too. You're an idiot if you don't meet. Okay. If you're, if you're basically still, I love to call this like lipstick on the pig. If you're still uh, essentially overcoming objections, I don't really care how you're doing it. I don't care what you're saying. I don't care how good and suave you are at overcoming objections. To be candid with you, I am really, really, really good at overcoming objections. I like it a lot better when I learn how to shut the frick up and clarify, hey, this objection you're giving me, is it real or reflexive? Now you don't ask them to clarify whether it's real or reflexive. I'm gonna show you exactly how you do that. When you understand that your entire, like one of the foundational elements that if you've watched any of my videos now, you have probably heard me talk about 57,000 times, sell on need and value, not product and price. If you need help on that, go rewatch or go watch again. We'll link videos in this video here. Go watch it. And I'll get into details of need and value, not product and price. Until you get that foundational element, then to be candid with you, you're gonna miss so much of the power that I'm teaching you in some of these videos. But understand this, when objections come, your job, not their job, your job is to clarify real or reflexive. How do you clarify if it's reflexive? Well, let me start with this. If you're getting reflexive objections, too small, not interested, looked at it before. Basically, if we were to sit here and like literally write down all the objections that were on that soccer ball, my bet is that every objection you face is on my soccer ball that I talked about in the video a minute ago. And my bet is that you're working to overcome those objections the same way we all have for 30 plus years. I want you to understand that you are earning, like write that down, I am earning my objections. Now, I'm not making fun of you. I'm not being mean to you. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm actually empowering you because as soon as you realize that it is your fault, it is your fault that you're getting those objections. It's your fault. You're earning those objections. That should be music to your ears because now that you are the one responsible for earning the objections, guess what that means? You're also in power to eliminate them. That's powerful, right? Now that you understand that you're the one earning them, you can stop doing the thing that's causing you to get reflexive objections. And when you stop doing the thing that's getting you the reflexive objections, guess what will happen? Over time, you will nearly eliminate reflexive objections and the only one you're ever gonna have to deal with is real. Okay guys, now that you understand the basic premise that there are only two types of objections, they're either real or they're, they're reflexive, then your job is to simply clarify is the objection real or is the objection reflexive? Now it's incredibly easy to do once you understand that the objections will be either real or they will be reflexive. And it's also incredibly important to understand this. Probably so right at the neighborhood of 10% of your objections are going to be real. Roughly 90% or more of your objections are going to be reflexive. If it is a real objection, it will always have two elements. There are two characteristics of real objections that will be present every single time. And why this is so critical to understand is if I can get good at listening and clarifying, hey, is that objection real or is that objection reflexive? If only 10% of them fall into the real category, then by default, all the other objections are automatically reflexive. So it gets way easier. Real, they will always be time bound and they will also be emotional. Not or, not could be, not should be. A real objection will always be time bound and emotional. How do I know it's a real objection? Check it out. When the decision maker says something along the lines of, man, we're just too busy. We don't have time to look at that kind of thing right now. Call me back in six months or call me back never or whatever they say. Clarify. No. Now, Zach, when you say too busy, are you too busy right now or are you always like just slammed busy? Okay, by clarifying, I heard your objection. Your objection is you're too busy. Heard it, got it, too busy. Is that objection real or reflexive? Well, the only way to find out if it's real or reflexive is to ask. 
Hey, when you say too busy, are you always busy? Or is something crazy going on right now that's causing a lot of pressure? The decision maker. Man, listen, we're just, we're a small shop. We've, we've always got stuff going on. Which category would that fall into? Was it, was it time bound? Always busy? When they said they're always busy, we're a small shop, we're always busy, is that time bound? No, it's not. Was it emotional? No, not when you see the difference. So since it definitely wasn't time bound because it's always busy, emotional? We're a small shop, we're super busy. Suck it up, buttercup, welcome to be an entrepreneur. But it wasn't really emotional. So it definitely falls into the reflexive category. So watch, we're too busy. When you say too busy, are you always busy or is something causing you to be extra busy right now? My gosh, man, I've got an IRS auditor sitting in the office right next to me. He's going through the last three years of our books. We're facing God knows how much impossible fines. I don't know what the hell's happening. Was that emotional? Was it time bound? How do I know it was time bound? Will the IRS auditor be in there forever? Are they always editing the book or uh, reviewing the books? Nope. Was I emotional with my response? Yeah. Is something causing you to go on right now? Oh, actually, man, to tell you the truth, we're getting ready for a family vacation. We got a big merger and acquisition coming through. My daughter's getting married. My son is sick. This and 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 this could be my reason for having a real time-bound emotional objection. So when you identify that, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10% of these suckers are gonna be real objections, how do I know? Because I clarified when you said, too busy, too busy now, too busy always, always busy, always, poor me, poor me, I'm always so busy, reflexive. And I'm gonna show you how to deal with reflexive in just a minute because that is 90% of the time. But on the real ones, oh my gosh, this is what's going on. This is why it's why we're too busy right now. There's an external pressure that is time bound, that is emotional. Here's how you handle real objections. You ready? Stop! You stop, you stop, you stop. You stop. Don't say another word. You just stop. You be a human being and you realize that if you were sitting in their shoes dealing with the real objection that was time bound and emotional, not necessarily a bad thing, not necessarily a good thing. It was just real time, time bound and emotional. Your job is to be a human being and go, whoa, oh my God, John, holy cow. Man, I was gonna ask for some time on your calendar, but with the IRS auditor over there, man, I was gonna ask for some time on your calendar, but with your daughter getting married, man, I was gonna ask for some time on the calendar, but with the merger and acquisition, I was gonna do this, but because of your time-bound, emotional, real objection, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I'm still alive. Did a salesperson just respect my objection? And what is happening right now? That's the type of responses you're going to get when you start learning how to clarify and then you realize, oh goodness, that was time bound and emotional. They're dealing with a positive thing or they're dealing with a negative thing. And as such, I'm going to stop. I'm going to tell them, hey, my objective was this, but instead, this is what I'm going to do. Is it cool with you if I just follow up in a future date and time when this time bound emotional objection is no longer relevant? And because you became a human being, I want you to watch what their physical response is to your uh, un clarifying the real objection that's time bound and emotional. Watch what they do. Watch how you suddenly elevate yourself past 99.9% .9 of salespeople out there. Like for real. And then y'all want a pro tip? You love it when I do these pro tips? Pro tip. All right, so here's a pro, Prozac, Prozac, Prozac tip. I don't know, that's fun. We're gonna have a pro tip for you right here. When you identify these real time-bound emotional objections, if you want to be crazy good, I mean, separate yourself into another stratosphere in the sales world. Uh, one of my favorite things I train my sales teams to do, you go back out to your vehicle or you, you log off that call or you hang up that call. However it is that this conversation happened, be it virtual, phone, field, doesn't matter. When that conversation ends and I document the real time-based emotional objection, immediately grab a card, grab some type of card, write a note on it, a handwritten note that says, hey, John, sorry about the time-bound emotional objection. Please don't write that, okay? Man, so sorry that you're having to deal with that audit. Doesn't sound like any fun. Uh, I know I would need a lot of extra caffeine if it was me. Have a Starbucks on me. $5 Starbucks card, close it, envelope, stamp, mail it. You will differentiate yourself to a point that when you then follow up and say, hey, John, I'm the dude that a couple months ago 
bought you a coffee because of the audit? Any chance I could get 30 minutes on your calendar? What do you think John's response is going to be since you're a human being who respected his time-bound emotional objection and then you elevated yourself past the status where he's seen no other sales rep probably ever do ever? Hmm, here, you're getting that appointment. Cheapest $5 Starbucks card you've ever bought in your life. Real time-based emotional objections? Amazing! And you won't spend a lot of money because they only happen 10% of the time, okay? Serious pro tip for you. Was that good or was that good? That was good. All right, so if that was good, what do we do the other 90% of the time that these suckers are reflexive? So we'll go do a, the, the reflexive version of that. Too busy. Now, John, when you say too busy, too busy now, too busy always. Man, we're just a small shop. We're always busy. Got so much going on. Busy, 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 busy. I'm so busy. I'm the busiest person that's ever been busy. Wow, man. Sounds like you got a lot going on. Yo, let me tell you about how much we're going on. Do you have 20 minutes for me to tell you how busy I am? Not really. Okay, again, being facetious, but you get the point. When they're always busy, your job is to then attack that particular objection, clarify that, okay, always busy. So John, is it fair to say that if we were to schedule time to meet on this at all, it would have to be something that could legitimately help you. You'd have to be interested in it. If you're not interested in it, we'd be wasting your time. Yes. Yes, since I'm busy, I don't want to waste my time. What kind of jujitsu was that? You're supposed to feel found me. Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's fair. Well, man, look, here, here's like the bottom line. Um, I'd like to get 20 to 30 minutes on your calendar, show you a little bit of the programs and what we do to help employees and, and small business owners like yourself. If you see value in it, great. We'll talk about how to move forward. If you don't see value in it, tell me to get lost. Like, very simple. If those were the ground rules, would you give me 30 minutes? <sighs> Man, I don't, I don't know. Um, whew. Uh, you know what? Yeah, if, if, if you promise me that, I'll meet with you. Woohoo! Objective met. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just, I don't want to waste your time. Mr. Salesperson, like you seem like a really nice guy, but I just, to be honest with you, we're not going to be interested. We're just, we're just not. Fair enough. And when you say you're not interested, let me clarify, is this real or reflexive? When you say not interested, is that because you do not want to put benefits in place now or ever, or you just don't have the budget to do so, or, well, uh, yeah, uh, I guess if I'm just being totally honest, uh, we have a really high turnover around here. I don't know who's going to be here from shift to shift. I could, I could, I don't care. I'm not putting benefits in place. I'm not doing it. I'm not paying for it. I'm not putting it in place. It's not going to happen. John, brother, high five, man. Woo! I just realized that that was a real objection. It's never going to happen. You don't give two craps about it. Thank you for that real objection. I'm out. Now, in that kind of real objection, we ain't sending no freaking card. Unless it's a, I hope you get sick soon card. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. That is not nice. So here's, let's start wrapping this video up. I want to give you a couple of really strong key lessons that I want you to learn. You've already learned that objections only have two types. They're either real or they're reflexive. You now know that your job is to clarify the objection, not overcome it. You know that 10% of your objections or less are going to be real, time-bound, emotional objections. And I gave you a pro tip on what you could do with those. The other 90% are going to be reflexive, and we've given you a couple of examples on how you're going to handle reflexive objections, and you're going to drill into those reflexes. So check this out. Now that we know 90% of our objections are going to be reflexive, I'm going to give you another humongous pro tip that is going to help you out so much. So here, here we go. This is the framework that I teach people on how to handle objections and clarify them. When the objection is reflexive, so this is now assuming we're only working on the 90% category, right? The reflexive objections. Here's what happens. When you get objection number one, then you can get, uh, and then you clarify. Then you're gonna get objection number two, and you're going to clarify, thank you. It's almost like I can hear you. You're gonna clarify. Okay, so check it out. Uh, objection number one, okay, then there's a third step, okay. There's three steps to clarifying the reflexive objection. I already showed you how to do real. Three steps to reflexive objections. Step number one is when they say their first objection, too busy, too busy, okay? Too busy. When you say you're too busy, always busy, or something crazy going on causing you to be extra busy. Clean that up, phrase it the right way. 
But are, are you busy now or are you always busy? Man, we're always busy. Busy, busy, busy. That would be a reflexive clarification of the objection. They're gonna give you the second one. So you're gonna clarify. You're too busy now, always busy. Man, we're always busy. Okay, so when you say you're always busy, it's fair to say then that if we were, to, if you choose to meet with me, we couldn't waste your time. It'd have to be something you're interested in. Like either there's value to you or there's not. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, if those are the ground rules, is this something you'd like to look at with me? Listen, Zach, you sound like a really nice guy, but the truth of the matter is we're just not going to be interested. We've looked at this kind of stuff before and we're just not interested. Does this sound familiar? Not interested. I got it. So John, when you say you're not interested, is that because you do not want to put benefits in place now or ever? Or are you just not interested in what you've heard before? Man, you know, if I'm being honest, um, we just, we've just we've talked to our guys about it. We would love to put benefits in, but they don't want it. They're not paying for it. It's not coming out of their paycheck. Uh, I, to be honest, I don't even know that they can afford it. Okay, so here we've moved to a new objection of affordability and whatever else he wants to talk about because now he's just rumbling through objections. There's a pro version of how you deal with this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna baby step you into this because if you'll learn this three-step framework of objection number one, clarify. Objection number two, clarify. I don't care what the third objection is. It doesn't matter. They could say aliens landing on the moon. I don't care. Whatever the third objection is, you don't clarify. That doesn't sound right. You do this little thing called all in. Okay, I'm gonna take a second to explain to you and train you on all in. If you enjoy playing Texas Hold'em, a little bit of poker like I do from time to time, then you'll understand the phrase all in means what? It means I literally take all my chips, push them to the middle of the table, whatever cards I have in my hand, this game is over. I either win the jackpot or I lose. I either win and I get the appointment or I lose and I leave. Now, if you really follow what I train, the crazy thing about this poker hand is I win either way. I, I win. If you tell me, yes, let's meet, I win. If you tell me, no, we're not going to meet, I freaking win. Because now I don't have to waste my time. I'm not following up with you 37 times. I'm not teasing myself that this is ever going to come to pass. I can forget trying to follow up with you and I can go find somebody who actually wants to do business with me. Oh my gosh. I could have a pipeline of prospects that actually want to do this. Yes, you could if you'd stop chasing all the bad deals. But anyway, different training for a different day. If you follow what I'm gonna train you here on reflexive objections, number one, clarify number two, clarify number three, whatever the objection is, this is the all-in statement. This is the all-in statement. Decision maker name. Freaking write this down. Get your notepad out and write this down. DM, oh, yeah, DM name, comma, John. Look, man, I don't want to waste your time any more so than you want to waste my time. I, here's my promise to you. If you'll take 30 minutes and look at this with me, if it doesn't make sense to you, we're done. I won't follow up with you. I'm not going to bug you. I'm not going to ask you to buy something you're not interested in. If I can't provide value to you in a half hour or less, let's just call the whole thing off. If I promise to do that, would you give me 30 minutes? Okay, you've left them with what most sales trainers will tell you never to do. And if you're following most sales trainers advice and it's leading you to huge, big, fat paychecks with tons of tons of money and, and a book of business so big you don't know what to do with it, listen to what they're telling you to do and go do it. If you think that that might be a better way, perhaps what you need to learn to do is do what they tell you not to do and you ask a yes, no question. A yes, no question is incredibly powerful on the all in statement. But here's what you mentally have to understand, emotionally have to understand physically have to understand. It's just like in poker. When I push my chips all in, I don't get to recall them. I don't get to go, I'm just kidding, I changed my mind. I don't get to put my cards down. The other guy beat me and go, oh, come on, I want to redo. Come on, like let's uh -uh, flip a different card. No, when I make the decision to go all in, I'm all in. Now the power in going all in is it puts all of the authority on to the prospect to say, Zach, if those are the ground rules, yes, I'll meet with you. I'll give you 30 minutes to hear you out. And it gives them the authority to say, no, I still don't want to meet with you. And if you really follow what I train, I don't freaking care if they tell me yes. I don't care if they tell me no. I'm going to win 
either answer because either answer moves them forward in my sales process. A yes moves them forward to the actual DM meeting. A no gets them out of my follow-up sequence so that I can go chase prospects who actually care. Woo! I win. Come on, baby. Show me a poker hand where no matter what the card flop is, I win. Or actually, it's the river turn. No matter what the river turn is, I win. That is what happens when you go all in. And if you paid attention to the all in statement, it's DM name, call them by their name. Don't screw this up. Paul, John, Tammy, whatever their name is, name. Man, I don't wanna waste your time any more than you wanna waste mine, so my promise to you is simple. And that's all you say. If you, I don't have time to get into the details of this on this particular video, but understand this, understand this, Every single decision maker out there has two primary fears. They have two primary fears. And if you know anything about basic human psychology and the way the brain is wired, what does the brain do? What does your brain do when it senses danger, when it senses fear? It goes into fight or flight mode. If you really, like I wish I had time to go deep on this, but if you wanna know why objections happen in the first place, it's because you're triggering a 10,000 year old brain that is going, whoa, 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 whoa. Is it time to fight or is it time to run? That is why when you get into the overcoming objections battle and feel felt found, it so often ends up in either a fight where one of you wins and one of you loses, or it ends up with them saying, get the hell out of my door and don't come back. Fight or flight. Okay, that's good enough for today on that. Put that in somewhere important. So when you understand that, then you can understand that there are only two fears. Like this is the beauty when you understand the word only. If, there are, if fear is what causes fight or flight, what is the fears? It's the fear of having our time wasted, so wasting time. And the second fear is of being sold. Now notice, I did not say it's a fear of buying. We love to buy. Our entire multi-trillion, trillion, trillion dollar economy is built on people buying things they can't afford. So buying does not bother us. Nobody likes to get sold. And because we have an innate built-in fear of salespeople that are going to waste our time or sell us, the power in the all-in statement is it addresses and calls those two fears out by name. John, I don't want to waste your time any more than you want to waste mine. Big fear addressed. And my promise to you is simple. If you don't see any value in what we do and you don't feel it's the right fit for you or your company, you can tell me no. You can tell me to get lost. You can tell me what I, the, the promise is if I can't provide value to you, tell me no, and I'm not gonna follow up with you, I'm not gonna drive you crazy, I'm not gonna ask you to buy something you have zero interest in, tell me no. You literally just took the 10,000 year old brain that otherwise is ready for fight or flight and you addressed its two fears. And since fear is now reduced and or eliminated, the brain can go, Okay, if those are the ground rules, yes, I'll meet with you. Or, Zach, man, thank you, appreciate it, but no, not going to. And then if you're a freaking sales ninja, you're gonna realize just how badass that was because you won the poker hand with either answer. Bah! Till next time, Ninja Nation. Get out there and use this stuff.